In the previous uh, video, uh, we saw how to use this formula, uh, sine of b times the floor of a divided by b, uh, to compute the quotient of uh, the division of two integers a and b. Now, of course, you're going to use this formula when either a or b is negative, because if a and b are both positive, you just use the usual uh, way you learn in primary school. So let's look at, at this example. Uh, let's say we want to compute the quotient and remainder of and negative 41 divided by 7. Now, if you try to do it the old way, so thinking about the algorithm you are learned in, in primary school, so you're going to go ahead and say, okay, so I'm going to take uh, the number negative 41 divided by 7. If you think that 7 into 41 is 5 times, again, you're going to be incorrect. And the reason for that is because if you go ahead and take this 5, multiply by 7, that's 35. If you subtract it from 41, that for sure will give you a negative remainder. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to actually um, have a negative remainder. So what we want to do here is use this formula, the formula we have over here, to compute the quotient of that division. Once we compute the quotient, we can go ahead and compute the remainder. So let me change the color here again. So in this case, what is A? A is always the dividend, so A will be negative 41, and B is the divisor, the divisor here is 7. Okay, I have uh, almost set up the formula here, I have to erase this part because it's not correct. So what is the quotient? I'm going to apply the formula, the quotient is the sine of B, B is here is 7, so I'm going to use here 7, and I have to multiply it by the floor function of a, here A, here, I erased it, actually, here, it's A, divided by the absolute value of B. All right, so what is A here? A is 41, so let's see. So I'm going to have to compute the floor function of negative 41 divided by the absolute value of, of 7. Okay, I'm going to do this one a little bit faster. So what is the quotient? The quotient here. So let's look at the sine of 7. Now, the sine of 7, because 7 is positive, that's a 1. Okay. And I can do something else here. The absolute value of 7 is, of course, 7. So basically what I have here is the 1 that multiplies negative 41 divided by, by 7. Okay. So basically what it is, 1 multiply by anything is exactly the same number so it's basically this number this number right here okay okay so now we ha the only thing I have to do now is compute the floor of that number so what is the floor of that number so let me go to the next page so Q in this case would be the floor of this number so basically the quotient of 41 divided by by 7 is just this floor here. We're going to do that by placing that number on on the real line. So what number? This number right here, negative 41 over 7. So let me go to the next page and do that. So I'm going to go, let me go here to the bottom top of the page. So I'm going to draw my, remember what we're trying to do is this one, uh, 41 divided by 7. So I'm going to draw my real line. So this is 0. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 6. All right. Now, if you compute where that number uh, actually is, okay, so that's about, is this between minus 5 and minus 6? You can go ahead and check that. So just, you can do it actually putting this in your calculator and getting the decimal, or just try to see more or less what this number is. So this is minus five point some decimal. So I don't actually have to do it in the calculator. I just have to basically uh, uh, guess where that number is on the real line. So what is that number of the real line? It's always that number. Here is going to be between five, negative five and negative six. So let's see. Let me use another color here. So let's say somewhere in there. So that's going to be negative 41 over 7. So just by looking at that picture, I already know that the floor function of this number 
is negative 6. So that will be negative 6. So I can just go ahead and say that the floor function, the floor value of negative, one, negative 41 over 7 is just negative 6. So that will be the quotient. So this guy right here, this one, will be the quotient of my division. So once I get the quotient, I can actually compute the remainder. And the same way you do it uh, in primary school. So I was trying to do this one, 41 divided by 7. Okay. So what was the formula we got? So it was negative 6, so minus 6 was the quotient. So what I have to do now is I take negative 6, multiply it by 7, that gives me negative 42. Now that number, negative 42, I have to subtract it from 41. So the answer I got was negative 42, but I have to subtract that number from 41. So what do I get if I do that? So basically what I have here is I have negative 41 plus 42. And again, the reason for that is because minus minus is plus. So what I have here is negative 41 plus 42, that gives me one. And is that an okay remainder? So let's see. Uh, is that okay? So this, I'm, we are saying that this is the remainder. What is the property that remainder has to have? One, so it has to satisfy certain inequality. So what is the inequality says? So the first thing it has to be is that number that you see there. It has to be positive. Of course, one is positive. And also, the remainder has to be less than the divisor. In this case, the divisor is 7, and of course, 1 is less than 7, so it, has, it satisfies the, that condition. Do we also have the equation satisfied? So let me go ahead here and use the white color. Do we, also, you, do we actually know that A, choose the white color here, A is equal to B times Q plus R. So what is A? A is the dividend. So what's the dividend here? The dividend is, of course, uh, 41. So I have 41. That's the value of A. Is that equal? Let's put a question mark there. B, B is the divisor. Let's make it a 41. B is the divisor. Divisor is 7 times Q. What we got for Q was negative 6. Negative 6 plus R. R, of course, is 1. And that equality is actually true because if you go ahead and check, this is negative 42 plus 1 is 41. You don't actually have to do it because if you actually this, did this computation correctly, all this in here is actually telling you that this equality is true.